Park. This week is going to be a really busy week. Right now I am heading to BBC Radio Less. This time I'm going to be on a Curry show. on my way to BBC Radio Leicester. This time I am on air to discover my ancestry. So super excited about this next story. Now, do you ever think about your ancestors, where they might have been, and if, if anything in your character um, still holds a trace of who they were and where they were, what they might have seen, what they might have been. Well, earlier this year, back in April, we started an experiment. It was all part of celebrations marking 65 years since the discovery of DNA. And we set a historian from Leicester and a professor, a specialist in DNA technology, the task of finding out as much as they could about Natasha Mina from Leicester, who's with me now. Hiya, Good how morning. you doing? Now, I remember this because you had to, in a very undignified way, spit <laughs> in a pot. Yeah, live on air. Live on air. Yeah. <laughs> and then Dr. Erin L. Haight was analysing DNA samples that Natasha provided during the breakfast show. So we're going to speak to him in just a moment. How are you feeling, Natasha? I was just saying, I'm a bit intrigued. I'm really intrigued. And it's, it's kind of one of those things where you think, actually, do I really know myself? And I don't think I do. Now, you didn't know an awful lot about your family history. So no. Tell me sort of what you think will, will be there. So right now, as it stands, I believe that I'm half English and that the other half is a mixture of Egyptian and Sudanese. All right, then. So that's the theory so far. Yeah. Are you ready for the big reveal? Yeah, to find I'm ready. Out what, what is actually in I was your born DNA? born ready. <laughs> <laughs> She's so excited. Uh, well, Dr. Aaron L. Hake is on the line now. Yes, absolutely. So we ran Natasha's DNA in GPS Origins, that's our tool, and the first thing that it does, it classifies uh, different regions with the DNA with different parts of the world where that DNA is uh, uh, more prevalent uh, than other places. And we found Natasha's DNA to be sent from Scandia. So we're going to phone him up again and we're going to get him to stand by a window or something okay. obviously because the line's dropping out yeah yeah so did you did you just hear a tiny no sh- right, i'll give you a clue yeah. okay he said scandinavia okay that, <laughs> where where did that come from i know and which side yeah so there is so there is in what? your dna mix there is a, a fairly hefty chunk of scandinavian wow. dna Let's try again. Sorry about that, Erin. Let's see if the line's a bit clearer. OK, so we got we got sort of Scandinavia there, OK? Yeah. Uh, another 12% came from southern France. Um, 11% came from northeastern Africa. Uh, and then there are a couple of components from uh, Siberia region, North Eurasia. And we see here um, some va- uh, Nile Valley. Uh, region that's uh, associated with uh, South Sudanese Egyptians okay, uh, and some Arabian components. Okay, so there's uh, a little, there's a little bit there, but 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 I think this this Scandinavian side, I think, is, is something which that's just the biggest the, part. Yeah, the, the, oh, uh, it, it is. Now, what the what GPS Origins also does, it breaks the DNA into two primary components, usually associated with one's parents that the DNA originated in one place and then her ancestors moved to another place um, in a certain time in history, which we can also figure out. And we see a movement from Poland to Hungary. Uh, That's probably the European line, eventually ended up in the UK, but unaltered. Um, And then another one in North um, Africa, moving from Algeria to Morocco. That's maybe more um, the the, the, uh, North African line. But it's not Moroccan, and I looked for it quite carefully. 
Uh, it's not the uh, Egyptian, sorry. So the Egyptian uh, side is, is, is not there. It's, and wow. It's, Moro it's wow. Moroccan, it's not Egyptian. And that's, and that's very common because Egypt is like, you know, the, the London of, uh, of this part of the world. And we see migrants there from Turkey and Iran and, and Algeria all the time. So, um, so we can uh, make that difference. Um, and, and yeah, this is the story of the DNA. And, but do you know what? You are going back, though, to the first century AD, aren't you? I mean, this, this is going back, this Algerian link goes back to, to the start of the, of the millennium. Yes, absolutely. So it, we dated it from uh, 100 to 1200 AD, um, and the, uh, the European component is 1000 to 1700 AD. Um, this is one of the most diverse genomes that I've ever seen because it has components both from Africa and Europe and Siberia. And of course, when you uh, have components with Siberia, then you're also showing similarity with Oceanians and, and Americans, just a tiny bit because essentially these are the same people wow. uh, that, that move, some of them moved in one direction, other um, ones came into Europe. That is an incredible gathering of DNA. So, Natasha, I don't know what to say. It's, do you know what? It's actually a little bit emotional um, when you hear it all because, I don't know, it's just... You've got tears in your eyes. Yeah, just a little bit of a twinkle. I'm kind of... You're learning something. You're learning about who you are and you're thinking, oh, well, I can't wait to tell my family. I can't wait to tell all my Egyptians, you know, you're not, you're not actually that Egyptian, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're all Algerian. Yeah. And then, and then the other side, which have these roots in Russia and Scandinavia. You yeah, well, Natasha. Viking. Natasha is a Russian name. So Ooh, it's all coming together. Yeah. So what what a wonderful thing. And, and you know, we've got more of this. We're going yeah. to reveal more because that is your ancestry that's inside you. That's, yeah. that's, that's your sort of your bloodline. But coming yeah. up, we're going to find out what those ancestors, some perhaps more recent ancestors, uh, were doing. Maybe what, what brought them to here. Yeah, yeah. So we've got more to come. So wow. there's, there's quite a discovery to be made. Amazing. So, yeah, stay with us. You're okay to stay, aren't you, to yeah, yeah, yeah. the programme and we'll reveal the next chapter yeah. in your history. And taking the Dixon line back three or four generations, they're all shipbuilders. Um, the name Dixon is very well known in shipbuilding, apparently. I've been researching this. A um, lot of families of Dixon were, were shipbuilders. In fact, there's a very famous one called Sir Railton Dixon, who was the shipping magnet up there. Wow. Wow. I was on the Curry Show on Monday, and I did the tiniest bit of vlogging because I'm rubbish. And then today, it was the DNA results, and then the following Monday coming up, I will be on Table Talk. So BBC Radio Leicester, shout out. Thank you very much for these unique opportunities. Later on, I am going to Nottingham to meet a very special person, and uh, I cannot wait. Right, so it is now about 22, quarter to 12, and I'm currently about to set off to Nottingham, and I'm going to meet a very special lady who I actually met through YouTube, very inspiring my age, and it turns out we have a lot in common. It is Friday, it is really early morning. I've been up since about half five this morning, which is a first for me. I do wake up early, but not this early. But waking up this morning made me think, can I actually sustain this? Like, would it be good for me? And I have heard of something called the 5 a.m. club. Let me know if any of you guys have heard of it um, and the benefits of it. Do any of you guys do it? Um, if you do, leave it in the comments section below just so I can see. I'm quite curious. Would any of you be interested in seeing the benefits? Because I'm actually willing to give it a go. Waking up at 5am for a week and seeing how I feel. I have a feeling it'll be really good for me. Anyway, like I say, let me know what you think in the comments section and uh, maybe I'll give it a go.